his dad's a vicar. You know, he does his gig, I do mine. Basically, his gig is to try and keep me solvent or something, and protect me. I, you see, to be like me, you've got to be a bit of a selfish loony and not worry about things like night and day, and not worry about right and wrong and so forth. And one's behaviour does make one ashamed quite often, so I try and keep away from those relationships where somebody's going to suffer because of my behaviour. Um, and Peter is a very, very nice, very kind man, a very lovely man, and I love him to death. Um, we don't always get on too well because his job is, in a way, to look after my weaknesses. Um, he's managing me. He's managing the things I can't do for myself, isn't he? That's what a manager is. Sex and drugs and rock and roll Is all my brain and body need Sex and drugs and rock and roll It's very good indeed Keep your silly ways Or throw them out the window The wisdom of your ways I've been there and I know Lots of other ways What a jolly bad show If all you ever do Is business you don't like Black Hill spent 15 years on the verge of going skint and for the first half of 1982 I was really ill. By the time I recovered, they had gone skint. Sex and drugs and rock and roll is very good indeed. I mean, everyone imagines that people like me really want to be popular and really want to be famous. But I don't. I don't like being popular and famous. I like being a lurker. I like being in the shade. I like being naughty. Very difficult to go, like, put your fingers up to somebody. Johnny Rotten can do it, John Lydon. He go, <clears throat> like that when people say hello to him in the street. I don't like doing that to people. I feel like doing that to people. But I've set out, I had a hit record, or a couple of hit records, and that removed my right to be rude to people. It removed my right to, in fact, it seemed like it was my duty. People come up to you and go, give us an autograph. I go, don't be silly. They go, give us an autograph, I bought you a record. You go, oh. They can chin me if I don't give an autograph, you know? They wouldn't chin me. But they get very irate. So then you feel it's your duty to do that, which it is, in a way. And you've set out and you've done that. You, it's your fault, my fault. So I accept that it was my fault. Um, it happens less now. I'm a far happier person. Far more I involved with my work. Sometimes I can get really involved with just writing words. Somebody nicknamed them shopping lists, and I think that's a really sweet way of describing them. I find that's enough. It's just words that mean, each thing means something, doesn't have to join up. I mean, it just goes, to be specific, you're terrific. To be precise, you're awfully nice. To be quite clear, oh, I love you, dear. And that's a fact. To be exact. Money the poo is having a wank. Oh, what are you up to? Said Tommy the Tank. Peter the Rabbit. He's at it as well. And all the young pixies in Dingley Dell. Singing fuck off, Noddy, you stupid brat. Fuck off, Noddy, in your rotten hat. That's quite a good one. This one, we snooted our cocaine and we fucked with true disdain. And then we did both of those things again. <laughs> I like writing how to. 
little article, how to do that, how to do that, right? Just, and you can say what you like, you know? How to avoid getting poisoned by cocaine. First thing is, like, cocaine is twice the price by weight of gold. And unlike the gold, which the chunky gold bracelet is still around your crocodile skin neck in the morning, right? But all your cut, it's gone. And you've just turned into a fascist overnight. So I really hate cocaine. If it was £40 a pound down at Sainsbury's, that'd be different, do you know what I mean? Then we'd probably go, oh, I think I'll have some... No, I'll leave it, do you know what I mean? But... Here's one called The Reporter. <laughs> I'm here to find out what makes you tick. I'm here to discover the secret you. I want to reveal that you're crooked and sick in such a way that it makes you spew. Because I'm Byline Brown from the National Dailies. And this is how I earn my wages. After 14 pints and a bottle of Baileys, I will spread your guts across the centre pages. Like that. Have some of that. And, uh, you know, you... I haven't actually met any of them. Do you know what I mean? But I'm sure they exist. I, don't, I do know. I've never done an interview with any of those. You're the weapon in my settee. I started writing this play, but I couldn't get any front money for it. <laughs> so I stopped. I didn't really do it for front money. God, I'm getting such a tiz was here. Vera Gardner was a calendar queen from her early teens till she was 28. She had a silicone chip on each shoulder and her pulses kept the normal rate. Vera Gardner, calendar queen. She was free of sin and free of fools and studied French and German at the evening school. So then as her body posed for its unknown dreams, she did the business for them quiet screams in her thick mascara and her facial creams and her fishnet stockings with the crinkly seams. So those words are eems and jeems. It's really the eems, eems. It doesn't matter what the... You can even hear it, really. We set the scene and it goes, Vera Gardner, calendar queen. Dum, dum. Yeah, like that. Then, music, like maybe a harp or something. Blah, 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 blah. Her thoughts did come to save her life. That's just like a, a bracket, so in parentheses. Some old boy in Bethnal Green will be having a wank with a magazine, which might warm him up enough to prevent him catching hypothermia. And suddenly, she's become Florence Nightingale, calendar queen. And it's not necessary to go any further than that, that's it. And it goes out of time at the moment, I'll probably leave it like that. It goes out of every thought of a groove and goes into a, whew, like that. Wow. That's a year's work there. And if I'm lucky, maybe six or seven songs will come out of it. It's quite a lot there. But it's on the principle that the more you write, the more likely you are to get a few out. He learned to play piano by teaching himself a long time ago. And I think it was Delacroix, who was a French painter, who said inspiration is getting to our studies at 9am. And Russell finds him more uh, productive to actually act as if he's going to work, like right, 9 to 5. It's like, you remember the Brill Building? Carol King and all that in New York. Well, they went in there during the day, and they worked during the day like a proper job. Writing now, I don't work like that. I work all kinds of hours and when I feel like it, really. And Russell goes in there and applies himself to it. It's eight